I would say to anybody with excuses, keep your excuses. I'll keep my effort, and both of our achievements will reflect. I had a needle in my arm. I was a drug addict. I, I, I was drinking every single night. I was selling things and doing terrible, terrible things. You know, I, I, I was the worst health that you could ever imagine. My parents had written me off, didn't talk for years. I was the definition of loser. There is no other words. I can keep going, but we run out of time. Who am I to, 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 to one day go, oh, I'm going to go to the gym. You know, when I walked in there, I had a hoodie on. I, 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 I was drunk. The guy caught me. I left that out of the story. The guy called me out halfway through a bottle of Jack Daniels at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. But I'm going to go to the gym? I used to have people tell me, Dave, you're all talk. You know, important people in my world that I cared about finally had the nerve to look at me and say, you're all talk. You, you know, you talk. You know, they would come up with excuses like, like the question started with. So one day I said, I'm over it. Doctor showed me on the screen this big. He did. I'm not kidding. A very impressive hospital. This big. He said, Dave, don't run. This is your knee. It needs to be like this. And this, should be like this. But, and this is it. He gave me an excuse to, to, to not run. I became the king of uh, standstill sports, I like to call it. I played horseshoes. I was playing dogs. I played every single thing you didn't have to move. And then one day, at that same round 30, I went, what the hell with that doctor? I'm going to be dead. I'm going to blow my own head off here. I'm not in a good place. I'm going to run. And then from that first day in the gym, drunk, got my body fat, for test, uh, body fat tested, had a hoodie on, and I ran five miles. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. By far the hardest thing. You get the pain, you know, you, you can't breathe, you get the aches, you get the this and that. And you know what I did? I went home and I drank that night. I'm not going to lie. I didn't understand diet. I didn't know about those things. All I knew was I needed to kick my own butt. A little later on down the line, I learned not to drink, don't build your life with one hand, tear it down with the other type of stuff. Uh, but as far as anybody with excuses, delete them. They're yours, and nobody else is giving them to you. Nobody else cares, because we all got our own. I there's probably not a single answer, but what was it that day that made you decide to get up and do it? You know, what, there had to be something that was the, the kick. That day for me was the phone call. Everybody in my life wanted something from me. My car was literally parked in the neighbor's garage because the pawn shop was gonna come and get it. I pawned all my tools, I pawned everything trying to make my house payment. There was nothing left. And, and this guy literally out of the blue, and I'm, I mean, how hard is it to pray with a bottle of Jack in your hand? But I was. And, and I got a phone call out of nowhere from people I owed money to that said, David, you don't owe us money. Come in and train. That gentleman, all he was trying to do was get an extra 20 bucks for Christmas, I know it, you know, or for, for whatever his paycheck was. But for me, it changed everything. And that day was, you know, people ask for a sign, ask for this and that, but don't ignore it. You know, I took that sign and I lived in Hollywood six years later with a totally different life. Is that guy, do you know who that guy is? Do you still see him? Do you? I don't. I don't know who that guy was um, because it was months and months later until I'd done it. Then. You know, you, you, we all want to be a, a fitness model right off or we want our goals right now. That's why we hop on these 1200 color crazy diets. We do this stupid stuff that we do. Uh, so, but I, I, my intention wasn't ever to do this. So I never was, uh, had enough edification to go back in there and say, bro, you know, thank you. You guys changed my life. I talked to Lifetime, the, the, the gym a little bit about my transformation. We're working with them to do something uh, to acknowledge that gym and, and essentially their ability to wipe away my debt when I come back in and drink. I think it's kind of uh, uh, odd that you have, you said, oh, I'm fat right now, I'm partying. I mean, when your body's pretty much phenomenal. You know, why do you think even someone who's in as good a shape of you has body image or whatever it is? Uh, I think body issues, anybody can have them. You know, I, I once brought some girls home one night from a party and one little girl wasn't happy to be there and, and uh, her friend is kind of hanging out with me and she looks down and goes, you have a huge mole on your face. Did you see that? I'm like, oh yeah, uh, that's right. I got a mole on my face, you know. I, I've had it my whole life. It's an insecurity. Uh, teeth, got my teeth busted off talking too much. Insecurity. Some of those things I can't fix, but the things I could, I worked on. Self-esteem where I want Always want to be better, always wanting a, this potential, which is what the new carrot is now that I'm not angry anymore, is a difficult thing because there's no finish. There's no end, I'm good enough. But I chose that. I don't want to ever be good enough or I'll stop. But I want to be proud. And I think that's where I am right now and I think that's where most people can get, is happy, proud, content 
with the drive for more. So my last question is, what, where do you see yourself a year from now? You asked Allie that, like, what are you going to do at the end of, end of the year? So what do you want to do at the end of the year? A year, a year from now, I see myself hoping, uh, hosting a show similar to this. I created my own .com where I've hosted several hundred videos so that I can prove that I do stuff like this. I'd like to be influenced in the world at a percentage that anybody can join at uh, my davidkinley.com. And uh, being a sponsored athlete, I like to do a lot of public speaking. And the guys that I'm working with have created a platform where I'm able to do that. So I guess to sum all that up under one umbrella answer, I would like my name to be a little more Googleable. And I would like the, be the message that I'm preaching about educated bites and steps to relieve your own anxiety, to your own pain, to be spread.